cars, regardless of how they're powered and fueled, have become vastly more complex over the last half century. They are no longer the mainly mechanical devices they once were, with a handful of dedicated electrical circuits devoted to lights and perhaps, if you were lucky, a radio. But they're now nothing short of computers on wheels. But while cars have become more complicated, and special automotive grade computer systems and in-car networking have been designed over the years to enable this kind of complexity inside the vehicle, there are still some things about modern cars that are done in a very traditional way. Take vehicle wiring, for example. While communication between various in-car computers and digital systems like engine management units, traction control systems, and sometimes even infotainment is done using the controller area network or CAN bus, things like lights are for the most part wired exactly the same way they've always been, by running discrete power lines from the car's main battery through a fuse block to the device in question. Okay, yes I know, I'm super simplifying things, and yes, I know, CAN bus isn't perfect. In fact, it's anything but, it's super flawed, and it's ready for a replacement. And I also know that switches in your car don't actually always connect directly to the thing you think they're switching. Sometimes there's some CAN bus mumbo jumbo going on there too, but for the most part, modern cars are still a spaghetti of wires. The methodology of running individual wires throughout the car not only means our cars have gotten heavier as technology has improved because we're using more and more wiring to do all of that stuff, but they've also become a lot more complicated. And because your traditional wiring harness is made up of a bunch of wires just bundled together in a wiring loom, installing that loom in a car while it's being made is something that you have to use a human rather than a robot for. It's also super complicated for those who like working on their car, as each wire has its own colour coding that can be very similar to another wire in the same bundle of wires, as well as a connector that probably houses 20, maybe even 30 other connections in the same plug. How do I know? Installing and screwing up the wiring for a towing kit in my Chevrolet Bolt. Yeah, I still have nightmares about contorting myself into the trunk of my car cutting the wrong cable, and then having to solder things back together in sub-zero temperatures in January. <sighs> anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that while tech's advanced, the way we connect all of our wires together in our cars hasn't really. Except it now has, thanks to Tesla and a new wiring patent it's applied for. Like so many other automotive challenges, it's applied a fresh new approach to, Tesla has taken your standard wiring loom and thrown it out. And as these patterns published a few weeks ago, we did cover it in our news roundup, but I've decided we needed a full show on it, it switched things up, designing a new wiring loom that is much more like computer networking than automotive wiring. This new loom, as expected to be used in the upcoming Tesla Model Y, takes the many miles, yeah, I do mean miles, of wiring in your standard car and reduced it to a few hundred meters of cabling. And instead of horrible flexible wiring looms that are heavy and difficult to handle, it's going the way of the IT industry, making semi-rigid cabling sections with integrated connectors that can be installed into the car at the factory using a robot. That new design, of course, means more automation in Tesla's facilities, which, while bad for the people who currently work there, does mean that production costs can drop and Tesla's automotive margin can increase, or Tesla's sticker prices can drop, or maybe both. But what is really special about this new wiring loom patent isn't the fact that there can be a new loom that can be installed by a robot. It's the fact that Tesla is taking the approach that breaks up wiring into physical zones that each have their own computer controller. The example given in the patent is a door in which there's a single physical connector between the door and the main vehicle that contains a power line and the required digital interfaces to allow the car's main computer to talk to the controller located in the door. The controller in the door takes care of spitting out the power for discrete components and interfacing with individual systems within the door. It then connects back to the car's main computer, just like a networking switch does in a computer network. This pattern gets replicated throughout the car, leaving very few direct connections between the car's 12 volt power system and the components in question. It reduces complexity and it saves a lot of weight, 
even though each discrete subsection will need its own controller circuits and fuses in order to be safe. But there's one other thing that's being completely overlooked by many commentators, and it's a really big thing. Tesla's new idea for vehicle wiring also makes it much more theoretically possible for cars to be upgraded after they've been made with new hardware. Plug and play. Think about it. If each component has a common design language and interface to the main vehicle bus, it is super easy to swap out a component and upgrade it. Still not convinced? Just think for a second about computer networking. The standard networking system we've been using for computers hasn't changed all that much in a few decades. In fact, what we think of as the Ethernet port, that's the RJ45 or 8P8C connector, hasn't changed all that much in 20 years. Sure, the speed of the devices you're plugging in today are a lot faster than the ones used 20 years ago, and the cables used to transmit those signals have improved with more twists to carry faster signals. But all in all, the connectors themselves, the physical plugs, remain the same. Imagine a future where your Tesla Model Y, after 10 years on the road with Autopilot 4 or whatever Tesla is calling it by then, just needs to go to the service center to get upgraded with a new Autopilot 6 hardware. And all Tesla needs to do is unplug one module in your door or wherever it is and plug a new one in. Now that is revolutionary. Okay, yeah, I know, the idea of switching out old automotive hardware with new ones isn't a new thing for Tesla. It's talked about switching out old autopilot hardware for new stuff before. And I know that other automakers have talked about the same thing, like Byton, for example. But we're talking about a system with a handful of common connectors throughout, not the crazy custom loom, custom connectors of today's automotive industry, where different model years of different cars have different connectors, Nissan, GM, I'm looking at you. And I shouldn't pretend that there aren't problems with this because there are. One component failing in this system could mean a whole part of the vehicle fails. But I am hoping Tesla's already thought of that and has redundancy built in. So there you have it. Tesla may have revolutionized the electric car world, but if this pattern is used in Model Y, it could revolutionize the vehicle wiring world too. And in a world where automakers need to desperately reduce overheads in order to cover the increased cost of producing electric cars over gasoline ones, that is a very, very good thing indeed. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell, and if you'd like to help us make more of these and move to our new studio, please do consider sending a dollar or two our way every month through Patreon. Buy us a coffee using Ko-fi or visit our merch store. We've got some new designs on the way. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.